This morning, the Chernobyl nuclear site in Ukraine is now under the control of Russian troops. The impacts of this takeover stretch far beyond Ukraine. That's because Chernobyl was the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster in 1986. A botched safety test at the atomic plant caused an explosion which sent clouds of nuclear material across much of Europe. Dozens of people died and the area is still impacted. Chernobyl's position just north of Kyiv means if the plant is hit by artillery, radioactive dust could end up over Ukraine, Belarus and other parts of Europe. And overnight, Ukrainian officials reported increased radiation levels in a number of places in the area. Here to help us understand the impact of this takeover is Seth Gray. He's on the board of the Nuclear Energy Institute and a member of the Civil Nuclear Trade Advisory Committee to the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. He's also the CEO of nuclear fuel company Lightbridge Core. Seth, thanks so much for joining us. So first, let's just talk through what your biggest concern is now that the plant is in the hands of Russia. Well, as long as there's no significant damage done to the plant, that there aren't very serious concerns. What I understand is that the normal Ukrainian workers are operating the facility and they are surrounded by Russian forces, so they feel like they are hostages. But I don't think there are Russian uh, forces that are actually operating the facilities. Now, there's not that much to do there right now. The remains of the melted down reactor core are under concrete called the sarcophagus, and that's under a newer steel archway that protects the site. Uh, there's been heavy military equipment rolling through and around the area that stirs up dust, some of which has some radioactive uh, elements in it, uh, in the soil but nothing that, that would be threatening. The structure is not designed to withstand attack. It's designed to protect what's under it. But what's under it is, is already very much encased in concrete and is very safe. Yeah, and Seth, you, you bring up one of the really concerning reports yesterday that was that these employees had been taken hostage. The White House was outraged, they said, by those reports of detentions of employees there. Now, let's talk through, though, you know, what this whole exclusion zone looks like and what it means. I mean, there has been gunfire and fighting near this exclusion zone. The zone's about a 19-mile radius around the site of where this disaster happened. It includes an abandoned city. So if the Chernobyl plant were hit by gunfire or a missile, just explain what the worst-case scenario would be. Right. I, I don't think the worst case scenario is anything like what we saw when the plant had the original accident. Uh, we had an entire core of a reactor on fire, open to the air and blowing into the air. This is something very different. This is uh, fuel that's been cooling for decades that is under concrete. Uh, if the facility were attacked, uh, that would release radioactive elements into, into the air. But the large number of those have already decayed away. It would be more of a local issue. It would not be a significant threat. It would certainly make headlines to have radiation from Chernobyl in the air again. But, um, and it would be an incredibly dangerous thing for people to try to do to uh, hit uh, the site with weapons. Yeah. But, but you would not have a fire. You would not have something that would be continuously spewing. You would effectively putting some dust out into the air that has radiation in it and then would settle again. Mm. And important to note that none of that seems to be the goal here. This, this Chernobyl area is on the route to Kyiv, which seems to be why it was of importance to Moscow. Seth Gray, thank you so much. Your expertise is greatly appreciated on this topic. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.